So just the other day, I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw this. I thought to myself, didn't the Warriors just get knocked out like a week or two ago? And aren't the playoffs still just in round one? I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And that's when I realized Steph Curry is angry and he is gonna put together a revenge tour and just squash the league in 2022. First off, I wanted to say, if I had 100 mil in the bank and just finished an NBA season, I'd be living in a five-star resort for months. Steph Curry, on the other hand, with all that money in the bank and after putting his body through a rigorous NBA season, is back in the gym. And I wouldn't be surprised if right at this moment, he's doing something like this. That is what you call a true MVP. I mean, he's back to a new day one in training after just coming off a performance that rivals his unanimous MVP season. I mean, if his 2021 team was just a little bit better, Steph probably would have won his third most valuable player trophy this year. Gotta give credit to Nikola Jokic though. He had a great year and is redefining the center position in the NBA. However, this will change next season because the 2022 Warriors are gonna be a lot better as a team. With the return of his fellow splash brother, Clay Thompson, plus the extra year of experience from the younger players like Jordan Poole, JTA, and Wiseman, the 2022 season, when compared with 2021, it's gonna be day and night. You know, I hate losing it all, but perhaps this loss to Memphis was one of the greatest things that could have happened to Steph Curry and the Warriors. I mean, going to five straight finals and winning three of them zaps your competitive drive to the point that even losing to finals isn't that much of a big deal anymore. I mean, look at Steph Curry's expression after losing game six to Toronto. Timeouts remaining, so a technical foul will be called on Golden State. That looks like an expression that says, darn it, I guess not this year. Okay, Toronto, I'll give this one to you. Steve Kerr looks like he's saying, oh well, you win some, you lose some. And Draymond Green doesn't look anywhere near as devastated as when they lost game seven against the Cavs, and he supposedly went into the parking lot to call KD. But now, despite all the accomplishments that the Warriors achieved this year, losing in the play-in tournament to a 21-year-old second-year player, Ja Morant, has probably hit Curry, Clay, and Draymond pretty deep, and they probably feel this one more than they did that game six loss against Toronto. The exciting thing for Warriors fans is, the motivation that comes from the pain of this loss might just be the catalyst required to take this big three to even more extraordinary heights. This might be the same pain Michael Jordan felt when he came back in 1995 and lost against the Orlando Magic in six games. This might be just the same pain that Michael Jordan felt when Nick Anderson of the Magic said, he didn't look like the old Michael Jordan, and that number 45 doesn't explode like number 23 used to. There's not as much trash talk in the league as there used to be, but I wish Moran or somebody would have talked a little more trash and fanned the Curry Flames just a little bit more. But either way, trash talk or no trash talk, I'm sure the prospect of losing in the play-in isn't sitting well with the two-time MVP. And that's a big reason why he's preparing his revenge tour. In an autobiography or something that Steph Curry releases in the future, he's gonna look back at this loss and say, I took it personally. Anyway, another reason why Curry's gonna destroy the league in 2022 is because he's gonna have a clear goal in sight. Last season, Clay got injured and there were too many rookie experiments going on like Wiseman and Mannion. And too many new players on the team like Wanamaker and Kelly Oubre. It felt to me like their objective for 2021 was pretty much to do the best they can and improve after each game, which is a good objective and all. But this next season, that objective is gonna change to win the championship. When you have a clear goal in sight, it's gonna increase your level of focus. And although focus won't show up on any stat sheet, it's definitely there. Look no further than the 2014 San Antonio Spurs for a great example of this. After a Ray Allen dagger, tying the series at three in game six of the finals in 2013, then losing in game seven, the Spurs took the spirit of Denzel Washington from the man on fire. And look what resulted. The 2014 Spurs used the pain from losing the year before 
and channeled that into extreme focus and ended up not only having the best record in the league that year, but they also came back to beat LeBron James so badly that he literally ran home to Cleveland, Ohio. Another reason why Curry's gonna have a revenge season is because he's on the back end of his career and knows the time's running out. He's 33 and turning 34 next season, and although he's still in MVP form, there's only a few more years he can play at that level. And I'm sure with his level of competitiveness, he's gonna look to push his legacy to further heights. He's already a sure lock for the Hall of Fame. He's already a top 10 player of all time. He's already the best point guard of all time. But the amazing thing is that, in his mind, he knows he can go a lot further. I am 100% confident that Curry isn't satisfied where his career is currently, and that he has a few more dances left before he decides to take a back seat. And speaking of a few more dances, I'm sure a lot of veterans and free agents are gonna take notice. Actions speak louder than words is a popular phrase that gets thrown around in daily life. And when you have a two-time MVP, three-time champion, when you're the undisputed best shooter in NBA history, practicing and training while other teams are still in the first and second round of the playoffs, people are gonna take notice and they're gonna to wanna to join you on that cruise ship. I mean, I'll bet Rudy Gay is already on the fence. He's probably at home right now thinking, I need to call my agent quickly and book myself a ticket to be on that 2022 Warriors roster. So for Steph's 2022 revenge tour, this is what I predict. They're gonna be a top seed in the league. They won't be a 73 win team, but somewhere between 60 to 66 wins sounds about right. Curry's gonna play like a unanimous MVP again, and he's gonna win his third most valuable player trophy. Klay Thompson is gonna nearly average 50, 40, and 90. Draymond Green is gonna have a stellar year on both ends of the court. But unfortunately, Rudy Gobert is gonna win the Defensive Player of the Year award again, because he's got that, you know, 50-foot wingspan. But that won't matter in the playoffs, because the Warriors will beat the Jazz in the conference semifinals. Then, in the conference finals, a super team's gonna form in Los Angeles, and either Damian Lillard or Russell Westbrook is gonna pair up with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. The Lakers are gonna be a formidable team in the West, no doubt about that, but a revenge season is a revenge season for a reason. Warriors in six. Then, the finals are gonna arrive, and a healthy Nets team's gonna be representing the East. Somewhere in games three or four, Draymond Green is gonna get in Durant's face, and the two of them are gonna jar back and forth a bit, with Durant's bodyguard coming in to shove Draymond, just like he did PJ Tucker. Then I'm gonna say, Warriors in six or seven. One person who's gonna help Curry a lot in the revenge season is gonna be James Wiseman, despite his subpar rookie year. Wiseman is a beast waiting to be unleashed. Don't believe me? Well, check out this video here, where I go over just how dominant this number two pick can be, and how he'll contribute to the 2022 Golden State Championship run. Click it, Watch it, and I'll see you on the other side.